Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another The Sports Scoop video. Today, we are bringing you guys our Big Board 1.0, although there will be no 2.0 or 3.0. Uh, our top 100 prospect in the NFL draft took us some time, about a week and a half, so make sure to like the video and subscribe. We're going to be going over in chunks of how the Big Board is uh, you know, planned out, so we go, I did it weird, I'm not good at math, don't get mad at me. Charlie already gave me enough for it. It's 1 to 30, then 31 to 60, and then 61 one to 100 so we're going to be giving each a player we like in that 1 to 30 30 range a player we like in that one or that 31 to 60 range and then a player we like in that 61 to 100 range then we will each give one player we don't like or we think is a bit overrated don't worry Mac Jones isn't in there we've already talked too much about him but do make sure, as I said, subscribe, follow us on social media at the Sports Scoop on Twitter, Instagram. And if you want to check out the graphic of the big board, although it will come up on in this video, make sure to follow us over there and it'll be up on our website. So you can go check all of that out. Without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, let's get into it with 1 through 30. Should be up on the screen right now. Our 1 to 30 prospects led by some guy named Trevor Lawrence. Um, so <laughs> make sure. <laughs> I don't know who that is. But uh, he, he's the list as he does on basically every big board. But, sir, he's going to 1 to 30. Who's the one guy there that you have maybe have higher? Where do you have him? We all as well made personal big boards. So who's the guy you love in 1 to 30? Yeah, there are a couple guys that uh, I have a high on my list that are a bit lower here. But one of the guys for me, especially to watch, is Jalen Phillips, Edge from Miami. This is someone that was higher on my board. I have him at nine on my personal big board. He is 17 on the combined big board. What I love about Phillips for me is that he's really just an all-around edge rusher. He really combines a very good uh, skill and burst. He has very good hand technique. He's got very good leverage and just has... A elite bend as well there's really not that many weaknesses besides maybe injury concerns and maybe he's not the the biggest guy but i love Jalen phillips i know there isn't an actual top dog in this um edge class like there usually is but i feel like Jalen phillips is as close to that as can be for this year's draft and in my opinion i flip-flopped on who's the edge one for wild it's been rousseau at some time it's been ojalari it's been pay but i think at the end of the draft i'm really coming to terms that i think Jalen Phillips really combines the attributes with the also decent amount of production he had in college. So he's one to uh, watch on my list. New York okay. Jets, look at this. He has him at nine. Take him. Go draft him. Serge wants that. Charlie, who's your guy in one to 30? I think I know who it is, but. So this is not to knock everybody else for their grade on him, but uh, I think Elijah Vera Tucker is. One of the most talented players in this class. I think he's my offensive lineman number two ahead of Rashawn Slater, obviously behind Panay Sewell, who is our number two prospect in the entire class, could potentially be argued for number one in terms of true talent. But I have Elijah Vera Tucker at number nine on my big board. I know it's not a huge drop to where we have him at 11, but I feel like that top 10 pick, I think he's worth that. I think that a player that's as versatile as he is, I know he lined up mainly at left tackle for the Trojans this year, uh, but I think the ideal role for him in the NFL, uh, because of that versatility, would be at left guard instead. Uh, I just think that the way he plays, he could be lined up, and if he do, if they don't line him up at guard, tackle's just fine anyways, but super versatile. He's super athletic, great balance, really good in the pass game, really good in the run game. Probably a zone blocking scheme fits him best, but again, not to knock anybody else's ranking on him. I just think that he deserves to be a little bit higher on our boards. Again, I have him at nine. That's a top 10 pick in my opinion. All right, so my guy, I'm going defense. I'm going secondary. My favorite position, cornerback, Northwestern guy who, well, you know, we have Slater and now Greg Newsom. I have him at 18 on my big board. He is at 24. So again, you'll see with at least the one to 30, we don't have much of a drop. It's just guys that we generally just really like in the class. Greg Newsom, just, he's just the ideal size. I believe six one, six feet. If you guys checked out me and Charlie's cornerback video, we had him at cornerback four. I have him at cornerback three ahead of Farley, um, as I said. And I think this guy could arguably be one of the best corners in this class. I think he combines that 
ball hawking skill with that backpedaling. I think he's aggressive, doesn't get too many penalties, and I think he really fits in many schemes. He's not like a JC Horn who's very good, but more of a zone dependent or more of a man dependent player. He can really go into systems where man is the main scheme that they run, cover three, you know, that kind of, of scheme. But Greg Newsom, I see a guy who's really versatile, and we say that so much on this channel. We love versatile playmakers. That's just <laughs> what we love over here. Elijah Vera, Tucker, Jalen Phillips, all these guys who really can do it all. I think it just offers so much more to secondaries. And I know cornerback is probably the hardest position to translate from college to the NFL, especially like we saw last year was just really embarrassing. And, you know, we're really kind of pumping the brakes on taking corners in the top five but i love greg newsom i think this guy is going to be really really good and i think if he can go into an already pretty established defense i think he can just make them even better really not rashad bateman i feel like you barely talk about him <laughs> i talk about him all the time like i tried to shy away i i, I had to but Very all right fair. let's move on now to our 31 to 60 getting a bit into the second arguably you know third second round um and charlie who is your guy 31 to 60 who we might have a little bit too low so i think that so can me and you are the only people that have amonra st brown actually mm -hmm. in this range in our personal big boards but uh both dylan and surge have him at 66 and 68 which i just think is far too low and i think that drops his ranking all the way down to where we collectively have him at 52. i think that amon St. brown although he's not the fastest guy on the field i think he runs unofficially like a 4 5 40. so not the fastest guy on the field by any standards but super good on the ball he his catching his hand-eye coordination he's his yards after catch, he works hard on those yards after catch. Even though he's a smaller, not as fast guy, I know not probably not the best combination right there, but really, all in all, he's super explosive, really, really good hands, and he's great tracking the ball while it's in the air. I think that he'll make a really good addition to any team that grabs him because although he's maybe not able to fit into that slot position because of his speed, he can be that wide receiver four, and give you valuable minutes when you come out with four wide receivers on the field he gives you valuable you don't have to be scared to throw him the ball because a lot of the times if you get that far into your into your depth chart at receiver there are guys that you don't really want to throw the ball in fear that they might drop it amonra st brown you're not going to have that problem he's got as secure hands as they come and i think just any team that adds him he's a great addition and he could become more than that all right, so my guy is Kellen Mond, and you guys know I did a, a solo video on him. I love this guy. There's two, If Kellen Mond and Rashad Bateman, I said this in our last room, if they get onto the same team somehow, I'm leaving the Giants. I'm supporting whatever I team that is. Kellen Mond, I just love, and I think people sleep on him so much because people see the top four and are kind of like, eh, like they don't care about the other. And I, I get it because quarterback is a really high-valued position if you don't have at least one incredible tool then people kind of, I guess, sleep. And Kellen Mond, I don't see that. I see a guy, and I've said it over and over again, I don't like to hop on the train, but I see Dak Prescott. Tech saying now this guy played four years. He had a over 100 passer rating. This guy was just really, really good. Um, not too high interception numbers. He can do it um, with his legs. He can do it in the air. He has a good arm. He has good accuracy. I don't see a guy who doesn't have a lot of pocket presence who you know puts his receivers in danger. I see a guy who can really go into a team and sit or even play halfway through the year I think the Niners hadn't traded up. I think it, they could have gone. Maybe they had they say they hadn't uh, re-signed Williams. They could have went and got him in the second round. I think this guy's going to be a second round steal. I think he's going to be a great player. I have him. I have him at 27. I have a first round grade on this guy. Um, and we have him, I believe, at 56. So he's my QB5. We have him at QB7. Below my two more hated players in the draft mac jones and kyle trask i think kel gonna be great and I, I i just can't wait till this guy becomes a starting quarterback and throws over 4,000 yards and 30 touchdowns because i know it's gonna happen and and I, i'm gonna be proving everyone wrong no that's if i can say if that's really wrong <laughs> yeah. if i can just say two things really quickly here if uh if there are 
only maybe two players that you talk about more in this class than Kellen Mond, and that's Rashad Bateman and J.C. Horn. And I think that if the three of them, I, I feel like you could be the one person in this entire world that just starts a fan club for those yeah. three players. And um, also, I, it's definitely possible that Rashad Bateman and Kellen Mond get drafted to the same team. I think that if the Patriots, for example, were to take Rashad right. Bateman at pick 15 and then draft Kellen Mond in the second round, now would you become a Patriots fan? That's the question. Tom Brady's not on the team anymore. I'm all in. <laughs> Fair enough. Serge, who do you love? 31 through 60. Yeah, I think um, there are a lot of... there. My, my player doesn't have a huge gap, but I think one of the more consistently underrated players that really falls on big boards, which I don't really understand why, is Wyatt Davis from Ohio State. I've been consistently mocking this guy to the Jets at 23 because I think besides Elijah Vera Tucker, who really is more of a versatile guard slash tackle, I think he's really like probably like a top two guard in this class. He provides really good zone blocking. He also um, provided really, especially if you saw in the Sugar Bowl, not only did he provide great blocks for Trey Sermon in the run game, but really kept Justin Fields clean, especially when he was dealing that with that rib injury and allowed him to throw very well from the pocket. I think no matter what team he goes to, please God, the Jets, he will be <laughs> a very, very good fit. And you'll be um, probably a quarterback and a running back stream. He's a player that in my opinion, a plug and play, I know the injuries are concerned, but given that he's young, I think he'll be recovered fine. He'll be a very, very solid guard. Yeah, I like Wyatt Davis. I think people, I actually don't understand why people are sleeping on him. He really just fell out of nowhere because that injury, I'm not sure I know his ankle in the national championship, but then he kind of, I didn't hear much, and I know Trey Sermon obviously got injured. But let's move on now to our 61 to 100, the last players that we like getting deep into the draft. So give us some credit. We know our guys, but all right. We're going Hopefully. back to you, Surridge. Who is your guy 61 to 100 that you really like? Yeah, this one obviously gets more uh, more difficult, more exciting, because this is where the sleepers really come in. Uh -huh. For me, I have at 76 Amari Rogers, who I have actually at 46, much higher. I have a second round grade on him. I love this guy. I feel like he really provides, they, they list him as a slot guy. He can play outside, in my opinion. He's got really good fits. Um, he's very good. Um, very good physically in my opinion yeah. he has decent route running has good hands can um really expand his game to the long um the deep play with trevor lawrence but also can use the short intermediate routes very well um just get him the ball and he can um really do a lot with it he's very good in yards after catch in my opinion he kind of reminds me a lot of people con are concerned about his route tree and when you think about it physical specimen with concerns about the route tree you kind of think of players like the i don't know dk metcalf i'm not saying he's gonna be <laughs> yeah, DK gonna metcalf. <laughs> for, a foot for, there. for once i'm not gonna say he's being dk metcalf but for me the, 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 the idea is very similar i feel like he could be a, he's someone that's getting consistently slept on if he goes to a very good team a team that is like maybe a vertical passing offense he could do wonders in that offense uh oh charlie something to say okay so <laughs> serge i don't ever again want to hear you compare amari rogers to dk metcalf dk metcalf has six inches on him i know but i but if you look at his uh, the, the physical, physical specimen that's a different level of physical specimen all i'm saying is that they're like their build is the same besides obviously the height i still feel like they're when besides you, when you look at their the concerns when you look at their DK positives Metcalf i feel like has. they're very similar in terms of that that um it doesn't know, matter great. terry mclaurin's better than both of them right. so we'll just <laughs> okay <laughs> oh my all right, god so let's let's on that. yeah kian what about you 61 through 100 so 61 <laughs> to 100 i'm showing love to the big guys in the trenches walker little out of stanford this guy is just uh and we see a lot of huge tackles six seven three thirteen i believe he's huge on my board i have him at 37 i think this guy could arguably a first round talent maybe to the bucks um or maybe even packers this guy is really good i have him at as i said 37 my offensive tackle six we have him at 63 as our offensive tackle nine someone who was actually really talked about last year i think he was eligible for the draft last year i might be wrong 
313, just massive tackle, really, really good in the pass game because he has, um, you know, huge arms and has really good leverage, really good at getting to the shoulder pads, pushing his the edge rushers up. Really good run blocker, especially in the red zone. Something I saw, he just mauls smaller linebackers getting to the second level and, and pushing those running backs into the red zone. I think this guy is just really, really talented. I think he's huge. Again, injury problems, like we said, from like Cosme and, and other of those six, seven, you know, Darisaw, um, those huge guys. But I think if you can keep this guy healthy, I think he's a really good blindsided blocker at, uh, on that left or right side. Um, and I think he'll be very, very good. And again, I think he's a plug and play player. I think he's ready now. Yeah, so I, I agree. I think if it weren't for Dylan's ranking on Walker Little, Dylan has him at 98. If Dylan had just dropped that ranking by 30, put him at 68, which is still below our collective ranking, uh, I think that would drop Walker Little into the second round. It, he's already in it. I think he's at 63 right now, but I think it would put him mid-second round at about 53. That's massive. But uh, I completely agree. I think, I think Walker Little is a bit underrated there. But my guy, who I have 61 through 100, is Tommy Tremble out of Notre Dame. I think that... Now, you might hate on him, and I was the only person of the four of us that actually put him in our big boards. And I have him at 75, uh, compared to where you guys have him, which is in the bin. So, (laughs) I I think that uh, Tommy Tremble, if you need a really good, consistent blocking tight end... Tommy Tremble's the way to go. Tommy Tremble is super explosive blocking. Plus, he's got good hands. So if you put him out there, they can expect a run. And Tommy Tremble's a great blocker. But then he can just drop off and catch a pass because he's got good, strong hands. He's super athletic. That's that transition between the pass blocking, the run blocking, and the pass catching. I just think that Tommy Tremble could potentially even play like fullback for whatever team that drafts him because of that blocking ability. Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. Someone like Kyle Juszczyk, something like that. No, he's... He's not, not Kyle, Kyle Juszczyk, Kyle Juszczyk, Juszczyk, Juszczyck, Juszczyck. Juszczyck. but he's the only fullback in the league. You're really comparing one okay. of the last fullbacks of the generation, Kyle Juszczyk, to freaking <laughs> Tommy Tremble. At least I'm not comparing DK Metcalf to Amari Rogers. Yeah, okay, fine. He's a Let's smaller say we both DK made, Metcalf. Me, Are you both... happy now? Smaller in terms of height. Their build is very similar. Let's just he's say six you're inches comparing shorter. a tight end. To Kyle Serge, that was check. worse than me drafting Bateman to the Chargers. Fair <laughs> enough. Okay. Fair. Now, I think that I just think that Tremble, super athletic, he's good blocking and in the passing game. I think that Tommy Tremble, I'm the only one who has him on the big board, so our collective ranking is only 90, but still a third round talent, and I think that's where he should be drafted in the third round at some point, maybe even fourth round if you wanted to drop him that far. But I think he's just a good, consistent blocking tight end. He's your number two guy. I think that we saw him at Notre Dame not getting complete starter minutes because they did rely on those tight ends a lot though uh they rotated those tight ends out very frequently so he didn't get starter minutes but we'll see how he can adapt in an offense in the nfl but also moving his on ian book so yes his quarterback was ian book what are you gonna do <laughs> maybe a seventh round talent yeah there. all right <laughs> um but yeah if you want to move on to our overrated players serge you want to start us off yeah, mine isn't necessarily overrated in general, but more overrated for the position. I have Quiddy Pay, um, who is on our board, I just want to make sure, number 20, and he's our edge two. I have him as my edge four. My problem with Quiddy Pay is not necessarily as a bad player. I think when you look at his build, he's very, it's very promising. His, his numbers don't really back it up, which is a small portion of why I don't like him. But it's more the fact that I feel like he isn't as much built to be an edge rusher. When you look at him, you see his uh, hip flexibility isn't great. He doesn't have elite bend. His speed's decent, but I don't know. And again, that really amplifies with, like, again, the production wasn't really that impressive. However, you can see that he can use, like, um, tactics like bull rush or swim moves, which would be very good in, like, I don't know, like a, a three technique or maybe even a nose tackle. Probably not a nose tackle, but more... I feel like he'd be very good in maybe other areas of the position. I feel like he isn't as polished as many other actual, in my opinion, true edge rushers, such as, again, Ojolari or Jalen Phillips. So he is my overrated player, or overrated player for his position, I guess. All right, so my guy was actually someone who... And again, I feel like if you're looking to kind of pump the brakes, I wouldn't like slam on them, but I definitely would would be wary of this guy. And that's Zaven Collins out of Tulsa. Um, 
saw our story when we post our linebacker video so he has seen the channel but I, I just I see a guy who is weirdly overweight and I don't mean that in a, in a mean way but he's listed like he's listed as a linebacker on our board we have him as a linebacker five at 45 I have him at 65 as a linebacker eight I would really argue this guy's probably more of an edge in the NFL or at, le or at least a 3-4 outside linebacker I definitely don't think he's a middle linebacker or a 3-4 guy who can play as those three linebackers I think he is kind of uh restricted to that but I believe Serge what'd you say no more no 270 270 oh my god sorry he clocked, I he clocked <laughs> I think like yeah have like he, like 10 pounds heavier than his pro yeah. day yeah, so, so he's 270, and, and what is he, 6'3"? Six, six, he's pretty tall, okay. I would say. That sounds um, more like an edge to me, like a 3'4". Yeah, four. yeah. Um, and he's huge. And and the thing that a lot of you are saying, he's really fast, but I don't see that. And, and my main problem is Tulsa's defense, and we've touched on in the linebacker video, is the hardest defense to translate, or one of the hardest defenses to translate into the NFL. And that really does scare me as someone who's restricted to maybe more of an edge or three four outside guy i just think the impact you will have at least year one just will be very minimal and i think teams are going to waste a first round pick like the browns or maybe the packers or arguably the giants have been argued to take him um at 11 which i think would be absurd um i just think this guy is, is a, a bit overrated i think he's probably a second round talent i have my as my linebacker eight i think he could fall and i just don't like how that tulsa defense um it is just very hard just a lot of a lot of the linebacking schemes they run doesn't fit with uh a lot of the the ones in the nfl kind of coverage he's not great in which is a problem so i think um he's my overrated guy but charlie who's your guy yeah i don't want to get into the specifics about uh zavin collins we me and serge actually made a top five linebackers video if you want to go see those specifics about zavin collins we'll make make sure to go check out the channel but also zavin collins he is decently fast ran a 1.63 10 yard split which is actually faster than demario davis which he recorded coming out of college and demario davis is one of the top outside linebackers in the league i could argue mm -hmm. um so I think that the speed is not as much of an issue, although the long speed could be. So I think an edge would make sense, or a 3-4 outside linebacker. But moving on to the player who, again, I don't hate this guy. I don't think he's necessarily overrated, but I think compared to the rest of the player, players in this class, he is a bit overrated. And that's Mac Christian Jones. Barmore out of Alabama. <laughs> that's Christian <laughs> Barmore out of Alabama. He is one of the 10 players that I have, or yes, that I have in my top 100 coming out of Alabama, and I think that he, I have him at 41 on my big board, which I do think may be a little harsh, but we collectively have him at 27, so I just think that Christian Barmore, when you look at this all-in-all -all defensive line class, it's really not as good as we've seen in years past. I think we've, it's, it's got decent depth, obviously, with Jalen Phillips and Rousseau and Ojolari plus Asai, Plus, I mean, I'm forgetting some people here, but uh, Quiddy Pay as well. And then you add some tackles. The tackles are really lacking other than Christian Barmore. But I just think that Barmore, he's not great against bigger inside offensive linemen. He gets kind of predictable. He tries to use the same moves way too often. And I think playing against experienced inside offensive linemen like Ali Marpet, for example, oh, yeah. he'll get smothered and he won't be able to do anything. Obviously, Marpet does that to any inside defensive Everyone. lineman. Um, but Donald, I out. think, yeah. <laughs> but I think that also his awareness is not great for the screen because of the way he bull rushes in. Uh, he goes as fast as he possibly can. So the stamina he needs to work on because he's going 110% on every single play, which I like. But it also lowers his awareness, so he's not ready for that screen to come. He's not aware that that running back is dropping out into the flat, ready for the screen. And uh, he doesn't see it in time. Also missed tackles. Not as good in the run game as he is in the pass game. So I just, all in all, am not a massive fan of Barmore, as some people are. 
All right, that will do it for the video. We hope you guys did enjoy. Again, if you want to check out the big board, make sure to follow us on Instagram or Twitter. It'll be posted over there. Um, you know, you can go check it out, comment, DM us, anything, what you guys think about the big board. We'd love to hear what you, if you guys want, I know we don't have many days, but if you guys want to maybe get another big board video, like more overrated or underrated, you can let us know. We'll try. Um, a edited full mock draft is coming to you guys. All 32 picked our final one and i think i can announce it we are having a live stream of the 2021 nfl draft uh hopefully all of us will be there um so make sure you guys go tune in on that we will hopefully be doing it around 7 45 p.m eastern time uh we'll kind of do a pre-draft little conversations and then we'll get straight into the draft we'll hopefully get through the first round unfortunately we are in school so we can't be staying up really late we know this draft does go pretty long because it does start at 8 30 so make sure you guys do join show some love get in the comments get in the live chat and let us know what you guys think about the draft all social media follow us over there and subscribe to the channel try have something to say yeah so i was gonna say elaborating on that second nfl big board love or hate if we can get ten thousand views on this video <laughs> yeah you know you know what, you know what? that these are really hard to make Twenty thousand views on this video <laughs> yeah um we'll make sure to get you guys another big board <laughs> yeah i don't see it happening Very but make sure to join us on our nfl draft live if you guys get twenty thousand views we'll do a 2022 mock draft during the nfl draft <laughs> yes yes <laughs> nah that's like 100k this is yeah 100K. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching this was Serge Kadali, charlie nidell and kian mcdermott we will see you guys hopefully oh, oh. on the draft live stream if not make sure you tune in to some other videos thank you so much for watching see you next time